Hello guys and welcome to another multiple map store throw tutorial with me, Eldrin from Lodge Silumir. Today we're going to be going over material conversion in Arnold 1.0.5.0 and um, I'm actually running Arnold 1.0.6.0, well a beta version of it and uh, there are a lot of exciting new features in this version that I can't quite get into yet or at least I'm not sure if I can get into. So. Um, I'll be doing another tutorial on some of the amazing new features that uh, the guy working on uh, C4D to add solid angle is uh, coming up with. There's um, a lot of really cool stuff that uh, is going to make um, workflows a lot faster. Um, but we have two objects in here from the content browser, my content browser, um, some stuff from uh, three, the 3D models collection. Uh, number 24, Modern Dining Room Furniture, and um, a couple of assets from Video Copilot Sound and Music Pack, which comes um, as part of the uh, Element 3D uh, packs, motion graphics packs, um, and particularly the keyboard here. So I've brought those into the scene, and then I've done a save project with assets to go ahead and get the textures out, which I've then put into um, the uh, Testa2 textures folder into a new scene. So we have a basic diffuse uh, texture for the uh, wood of the table. We have a diffuse for the keyboard, uh, some keyboard illumination, a normal map, and a speculum map for the keyboard. So um, pretty basic set of materials. Um, you would expect that your uh, external renderer would be able to convert these kind of similar to how Maxwell does and I believe V-Ray has a similar function for converting materials and now Arnold finally has it as well so um, if we hit uh, render on here we've got a basic HDRI in the scene here um, lighting it up I got that from the uh, Grayscale Gorilla HDRI pack just pulled out one of the uh, one of the uh, HDRIs and also that came through with the uh, save scene with assets as well. And uh, first thing you'll notice is uh, basically the tutorial is done. Um, the materials are converted on the fly in the new version of C4D to A. So these are basic C4D uh, materials um, with a basic um, diffuse channel, one layer of specular, um, an illumination layer, um, in this one, so we have luminance here, and uh, we have a normal map, and C4D to A picks all of that up and uh, renders it. And so I'll see you next time, guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, there is a few more things you can do with this system as well, but by default, it will render um, most basic materials, um, more advanced materials that use a lot more reflectance layers will uh, obviously require a little bit of extra tweaking and uh, materials that also use a few um, some of the other channels in here as well um, alphas come over just fine um, I believe bump comes over just fine as well um, things like glow, transparent, diffusion um, those are going to be a little bit more trickier and uh, you're going to have to use a little bit of uh, extra knowledge to kind of sort of get those to convert so we have two new keyboard shortcuts to convert our basic C4D materials into an Arnold shader network which we can use to add even more polish and detail to our textures. So let's see what the default Arnold shader networks look like that come from these C4D materials. For that all we need to do is select our material and we can either do a control shift R which is going to replace the material directly with a Arnold shader network or we can do a control shift D which will actually create a new Arnold shader network from this material but we'll leave the original material behind. Um, the benefit of leaving the material behind is if this is a more complicated material that's not quite converting over automatically really nicely then you can leave the original material behind and you can use it as a template of sorts to develop your shader network um, in a more manual kind of sort of way, which is how I do most of my materials, uh, particularly if I'm converting materials from 
say, uh, 3DS Max and V-Ray over to C4D. Um, maybe I'm doing some scene conversion or something like that. Um, I like to manually create those networks because V-Ray is a totally different renderer and you have to use some sort of uh, common sense and a little bit of like technical knowledge to kind of convert those materials over. Um, C4D scenes, depending upon the complexity of materials, you know, you may or may not want to do that. So for this particular case, we don't really have too much um, to this material, so we're going to go ahead and do Control shift r and that's going to go ahead and convert it. And you'll notice in your viewport, you get the uh, Arnold shader-esque look to your uh, material. Uh, here in your material manager, you notice that you're also getting the uh, Arnold render preview as well, and you've got a shader network. So if we open up the shader network, a couple of things we'll notice here is um, it loaded in our texture just fine. By default, it uses the, R, uh, the C4D bitmap shader, which is not bad, um, but it's not great either. I personally prefer the uh, Arnold uh, image nodes myself, but um, this will work just fine. And it plugs it right into the diffuse network for us, so it's pretty much what we would do ourselves. Um, our weight is 1, and I believe that's because in the original material our brightness was at 100%. You know, so if we wanted to add more to the common uh, Arnold 7.0 or 0.7 rather, you know, we can go ahead and change that, and that'll darken up our diffuse a little bit if we wanted to. Um, we can come in here and we can change some of the uh, Fresnel properties in the material. Um, one thing I've noticed with the reflectance channel, uh, by default, converting it into a Arnold shader network produces a result that doesn't really have a Fresnel. And so by setting that, we kind of get more of a realistic result all of our, out of our material there. Um, it's already uh, taken quite a few parameters from the uh, actual specular of the material itself and gave us some uh, pretty nice values here. Revisiting our original scene. So I'm going to open up the original convert C4D that I had uh, before I started the tutorial. Um, we can see that our specular strength here was 20%. So this directly uh, got converted over uh, in a zero to one fashion to the uh, C to the Arnold material. So coming back to that scene and uh, bringing back our Arnold shader network, we can see that that's what happened there. Um, the roughness also would get exported. So if we were using a uh, more advanced uh, reflectance uh, layer, then uh, we would have a roughness value that could be pushed out here. And so that would get directly added to our roughness. Um, the reflection strength and the specular strength become multipliers of properties here in the Arnold material. Uh, the standard specular color comes from the actual layer color that you pick in your reflectance material. Um, refraction does come over and uh, if you're using transparency that will bring in different uh, properties such as the IOR and roughness depending upon what properties you set there. So it does a uh, pretty decent job of it. Alright, so if we go ahead and do a control shift R on the keyboard too, we can go ahead and look at its shader network as well and uh, bring back up our shader network and we can see that we get a few more nodes here. So it created a normal map for us and plugged in that material. And then uh, we also have a couple of mix nodes that came into play. And uh, this is probably because our material is just a little bit more advanced for this uh, particular material than um, or other material. So because of the way this material was set up initially, with uh, the texture being there and the mix mode also being set to multiply and there being a mix between the white here and the uh, color here, we're getting um, a material that's got a mix node that's giving us um, a little bit more uh, 
control. All right, and of course our normal made it over. So, switching back to here. Now, personally, um, I don't really care too much for that actual mix. So, you know, now that it's a shader network, of course, you can come in here and you can delete things that you don't want. You can reorganize your nodes around. Um, you can add in new nodes to add even more detail and oomph to your materials. All the usual stuff that you can do now that it's an actual network and you can come in and do interesting things. All right, and I'll probably move that down that way so it's not uh, quite mixed up with that. Um, I think I'll get rid of the specular mix and go ahead and plug the specular directly into the specular channel. And let's see. I might want to come into the standard shader and let's see what kind of uh, look we're getting here. So for a keyboard, the uh, roughness should be quite a bit lower. This particular keyboard seems more metallic or plasticky. Uh, I'd probably up the reflectance to normal as well. That's going to make it look a little bit more metallic. Um, I'll keep the specular at one, of course. Tone down the diffuse back to Arnold's default 0.7 and um, yeah let's see what our scene looks like now so go ahead and render that and uh, you know there you go but you know thanks to the new material conversion system uh, something that would have took in you know 20 or 30 minutes to convert even for a simple scene like this only took like about five to three minutes um, once you knew what you were doing of course so alrighty guys that's uh, it for this one um, and uh, I'll be back with uh, more tutorials uh, very soon um, on my website I've also uploaded a new product the uh, Lumiere layouts it's just a, a collection of all of the layouts that I use on a standard day-to-day -day basis in my tutorial series. This particular layout is actually my production layout. Um, and so it's got the IPR here and the perspective here and it's got a, a couple of helper palettes here. Obviously uh, all the plugins are laid out here. So if you have things like you know <clears throat> X particles and um, if you had like Turbulence FD, I think I even had Turbulence FD docked here at one point although I use Houdini a lot more nowadays um, face shift and different things like that so all my all my third-party plugins are basically docked here got my hair tools here and I've got a bunch of other tools over here so it's a really nice layout uh, cameras have been customized I have a lot more cameras here MoGraph is also here directly in the uh, layout the content browser the projects are quickly and easily accessible um, my production pro layout which is also included in the pack our production UV layout has a quick body paint menu um, off to the side on the, on the second monitor uh, depending upon how many monitors you're using this might plop up like right here and it just gives you a quick lay a quick way to get at the uh, body paint stuff without necessarily having to switch to the body paint UV right away uh, the animation pro layout um, has my layout docked in a more animation friendly type of way with nitro pose docked here allowing me to quickly do poses with uh, the Lumiere rig tools which I also need to do a tutorial about and uh, it docks all my uh, my helper tools over here on the side as well making it just a little bit easier for me to actually quickly get in there and start animating stuff with Lumiere rig tools and then back to production again. I've got a custom sculpting workflow as well and uh, custom rigging scripting workflows for allowing me to quickly script and rig. So, you know, that's all available and it's uh, completely free or you can do you can add uh, you can donate some extra money if you want to. It's, it's a name your price product. So, you know, whatever you want to pay for it or if you don't want to pay at all, that's really awesome. All right. 
And uh, so, like I said, I'll be back with um, another one very soon. And uh, see you guys then.